and welcome to a very special episode of ClutchCast. I'm Matt Schroyer, and I'm here with my good friend and project car, the BMW Z3 Roadster. We are in the midst of a entire coolant refresh. Should be done approximately every 10 years or 100,000 miles, depending on who you talk to. This car is nearing 20 years old. I believe it's on the original coolant system, all original coolant parts, as far as I can tell. Uh, about 125-ish thousand miles. And uh, I've already taken the intake manifold off, already serviced the plastic pipes under the hood, and also the, uh, the water valve that goes to the uh, heating system. Now it's time for me to tackle all the components in front of the engine. So radiator, a water pump, a thermostat housing, and all the pipes that those attach to. So I'm going to waste no more time and get right down to it. update on the uh, aluminum radiator install. It is in place, as you can see, uh, but we have a slight issue on this end. You can see that the clips are, uh, are secured, and you can see that this tab here on the side is, uh, at least from the side view here, is fully seated. So this side is held in good, 
uh, make sure to check your old radiator for the rubber grommet here. It might get stuck in the old radiator and you have to take that. You do need these as part of the install. But going in on this side, we can see that, well, that isn't quite the case on, on this end. If I can focus a little bit, you can see that tab is not fully seated into the uh, clipping system here. Uh, this end of the radiator is a little bit high, so I'm probably going to have to go back down and uh, grind off some of the tab down there that's actually used to seat this into uh, into the radiator position. Um, so this is going to have to come back out. A little unfortunate. I was hoping it would just be a drop in replacement, but you know that's that's kind of how it goes with aftermarket components. Still seems like a you know that's that's a good uh, quarter inch difference there, and uh, you'd hope that they'd be a little bit more precise. But eh, what can you do? It's uh, it's worth it in the end. So I'm going to pop these off and take the radio back out and uh, try to grind down the uh, the tab on this side a little bit and maybe a little bit on this too just to get a better fit. So here we go. Important update in the garage. Uh, I've taken, these are actually the old uh, rubber stoppers or uh, rubber grommets, rubber pads, whatever you want to call them. These are the things that support the bottom of the radiator. These are actually from the old radiator and I've just taken them off and put them here on the new aluminum one. And um, initially I had some concerns that the rubber would be too old and too inflexible to use. However, I ended up having to cut a fair bit of uh, material off of both of these supports, these rubber supports, and uh, revealing the rubber underneath, and the rubber underneath actually looks pretty good, if I zoom in there. Um, so this is, this is actually still good after about almost uh, 20 years of use, which is pretty interesting. Um, I did have to, of course, like I said, cut them down to actually get them to, uh, to work. Both ends ended up being too high. Uh, the stock height of the uh, of this rubber piece here was uh, about 23 millimeters. Here, uh, this this goes on the, uh, the the right side of the car. This right side of the car, I trimmed this down 20 millimeters, all from the top, none of it from the bottom. So I lost about three millimeters of material on the top, and it fits much better here uh, with that material removed. And on the other side, uh, I ended up uh, losing about 9 millimeters of material. It's so about three times as much as the other side, uh, from top and bottom. And uh, I also drilled out the center so it's really easy to see how this fits on here. And once it's on, you can see that there is actually a fair bit of space between where this uh, rubber uh, support is and where the uh, metal rod to support the radiator that's welded into the radiator here comes out. So um, there is room to compress this. Uh, this metal rod welded to the radiator is not actually going to touch the supports that are welded into the car. There is still clearance, but I did have to clear out a fair bit of material. It was just too tall. Um, these pieces honestly needed to come down a good couple inches for this uh, for this to work and even then there's some tight clearance between the uh, the drain system here this this drain plug and actually the uh, power steering lines which is which is pretty telling so it's a much beefier radiator um, and you will have to do some modifications to the uh, rubber uh, rubber pads on them but I'm gonna go ahead and try to fit this on now and uh, make sure it's all level and good and clip it in nice and tight and then continue with the rest of the coolant system refresh, which means putting on the rest of the pipes in the front, and uh, maybe in a future episode, also doing a leak test before everything goes back on. But uh, step number one, this radiator has to go in. So here we go. I am almost done here, but there seems to be one extra complication with this Mishimoto radiator. 
Um, I was able to uh, trim down the uh, bumpers on either side and try to get it as uh, close to the original position of the original uh, radiator as possible. Um, that still doesn't resolve the issue back here. This is the upper radiator hose, and uh, as you can see, it goes in here to the radiator. Now, this upper radiator hose, of course, was originally designed for the uh, OEM BMW radiator, which is uh, thinner. So, in that case, it would work perfectly because it would go around here, you know, snake into the back. But now that we have a thicker radiator that pushes uh, this connection right here back further, and so you can see I've just sliced the original radiator hose right here to show you the difference that you have here um, now that you have a thicker radiator pushing everything back. And uh, this was, of course, connected originally. You can still connect it this way, but it was creating a, a kink because it was having to bend this hose in this direction, and that's not good for coolant flow, of course. I don't, I don't want to do that. Um, so I thought up a solution. And it's, uh, it's this right here. This is just a 6-inch uh, aluminum pipe designed for coolant systems, of course. It's got the, uh, I don't know what you call this, the nipples at the end to help with uh, securing a connection. 6-inch uh, in length and 1.5-inch in outer diameter. Um, I measured the inner diameter of the original rubber upper radiator hose, and that's about 1.57 inches. So just about the right size. And the idea here is, well, this end is clipped, so this end would go in this way, and it would bypass this whole section here. I would cut this section out right about here, and just add this in here. So we're cutting out the section that snakes around like this, because uh, we don't need that anymore, and just provide a more direct connection from this end of the hose back to the thermostat at this end of the hose. Of course, doing this very carefully, but uh, the general idea is to improve coolant flow by removing as much kink in this as possible. Um, now, of course, there's another hose connected to this radiator. Besides the upper hose, there's the uh, the lower hose down here. But as you can see, that looks that actually looks okay, right? So um, the hose, the lower radiator hose, is designed, uh, you know, to have a little bit more flexibility. Um, so having a thicker radiator doesn't really um, affect that hose at all. There's not really a crimp like there was here on the upper one. But uh, anyway, this is this is the old hose, so I was just trimming this down to see if this concept would work before I actually go in and cut up a brand new upper radiator hose, which is what I'm going to do now. Alright, we have the, the new radiator in, we have all the radiator hoses connected, we got a new pulley, we got a new water pump, we got new belts. That means that the front end of the coolant system refresh is done on this car in a previous episode. We did all of the coolant system that's beneath the intake manifold, so everything is plugged up. That means it's time for a pressure test to see if this thing will hold water and pressure and hopefully it won't leak. But that's for another episode. I want to thank you for joining me. I hope you learned a lot. I know I sure did about the coolant system refresh on this car. We'll see you down the road.